when people sign their pros at, at, at clubs. A lot of black black folks as well. I definitely pinpoint the black folks. We like to buy the flashiest things, buy the nicest cars and and um, you know, jewelry and just going out, splashing money on drinks and all like that. Um not too sure how it is now in the academy, but I know definitely back then in my time a lot of the like my the same colour as us, I think we was definitely doing a bit too much. Um, and wasn't being too sensible with our money. So I think, yeah, distraction-wise, that definitely caused a lot of distraction. You know, footballers nowadays, they have a bad performance or not a good game. Or vice versa, they have a good game. They're reading their comments and everything like that. When you made your debut, how was that? The time? Was there even Twitter back then? Um, <laughs> yeah, it was more, it was more forums, I remember. Um, I remember the forums like, when I was in school. Because I was in the school at the time when I made, when I, uh, made my debut. Wow. Uh, um, yeah, year 11. So... It was just different. It was just different. The times now you had, it was more. It was even Blackberries. Well, Blackberries started coming up, but it was more of um, Sonny Ericsson. So we wasn't really accessing to the. We didn't have that much access to the internet like that through our phones. Obviously, through laptops or computers, we did, but not through our phones. But um, now I've got a lot of um, exposure. A lot of people when I finished school, that like, when I would finish school while going to school. A lot of people would come up to me. I remember one time I, I, we finished school with my mate, and a man came up to me and he was like, um, "Excuse me, is there a is there a guy in your school that uh, made his debut?" And I was like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." And then my mate said, "Oh, that's that's like pointing at me. That's him." And then he did, but like, he didn't believe my mate. I said, "Yeah, no, it isn't me." He's like, "Oh, really?" And he shook my hand and he gave me a lot of words of of encouragement. But that's what I'm trying to say. It, it um. A lot of people were talking about it. it was on the papers, you know, and um, yeah, no, I'm proud of I'm proud of it. Honestly, I'm proud of that that moment. I, like I said earlier in this in this interview, um, I'm still the I'm, I, I still hold that record. I still hold that record of being the youngest player to play for South Bend. Um, so we'll see if it gets beaten. Obviously, records are always there to get beaten, but. I'm 27 now. That was what 12, 11, 12 years ago. So it is a long, long, long time ago. A long time ago. Yeah. Wow. Amazing, man. Um, something that not many people get to say. The youngest player ever. I think I've had another someone else on this channel. Uh, they were the youngest player ever. So uh, I kind of got a feel of what what is that actually like, you know? But quite similar stories where you're both in school so they were dealing with that that must be crazy you know you're you're, yeah. you're, you're playing with men and then you're going to school and yeah. like everything's different the dynamics are different the band is different everything's different like that that must have been the a weird one you know to process yeah i think um i think it was definitely weird but at the same time you don't think about these things you're just like in the moment so i was just living in the it, moment yeah. just living it and soaking it in enjoying like i'll come back to school and play my mates and do you know what i mean like we'll banter and we just enjoy ourselves and those were the best times because you're not thinking about money you're not thinking about anything you're just thinking about enjoying football and enjoying the moment so yeah definitely um now like if we play for free i think if football was Obviously, it will never happen. But if we could like literally change rules and play for free, not many people will play. Not many people will play. But um, if I was, it was back then for me, oh man, you love it. You love it. I loved it. But as soon as money gets involved, that's when things start changing. Yeah, uh, they say money is the beautiful evil. So yeah, when when yeah when the money gets involved, it's, it's, it always gets like that. Things change. I was gonna say um. I don't, I'm trying to think back if England came calling, 
And if they didn't, then that's a that's a catastrophe. Yeah, it was mad. I I'll be in the um the shortlist, so they'll pick their team, the the squad for whatever tournament, and I'll be on the on the on the the shortlist backup players. But I never actually had a cap at any academy level for England, which was quite frustrating because, to be fair, I thought I should have. I thought oh, I should definitely, have. Yeah. yeah, I think that was that's more of a thing that I was I was a bit pissed off with at the time, knowing that I didn't get a cap for England. I was really annoyed because there are a lot of players who I thought, um, mm-hmm. you're a bit not, only was I better, not, not only was I better than, but I was just doing doing better. Got picked, so yeah, no, definitely that, that was annoying. That was an annoying part of, of, of I say my time at the at my academy level or at the academy level. Yeah. Um... Just touching on, you just mentioned money, it gets complicated when it's introduced, you know, as a teenager um, in football and whatnot. What, talk, to, talk to the people watching, what kind of complications would you, would you say arise when, you know, money's introduced, whether that be on the field, off the field, things like that? Yeah, I think it's always, money will always, there will always be complications. You know, when you're when you're on a certain amount, it brings it brings jealousy, um, you know, and they compare it. So I'll give you a great example. Um, I could be on. Let's say you're my teammate. We're playing for the same team. So use Evan for example. I'm your teammate, all right, and I'm on five thousand a week, and you're on three thousand a week, all right. I dip in the form, right? and you're you're playing really, really, really well, all right? and, you, and you can obviously see that I'm I'm not playing well. You're gonna get frustrated or you're gonna get annoyed because you're on less money than me. Do you know what I mean? And I'm playing shit week in week out. I'm playing shit, and I'm and I'm I'm not I'm not at that level of that man that much money. So um, yeah, you're gonna get pissed off. You're gonna go and knock into the manager saying, "Yeah, I want more money." I'm scoring goals, I'm playing this. Look at Femi, he's not playing well. He's on this amount of money. Why am I on this? Do you know what I mean? So it brings that, it brings already, it brings that negative vibe. It, it brings jealousy, a lot of hate. Um, so yeah, that's what it is, literally. And not even that, but managers as well and coaches. Like what I said, if I'm not performing and, I, and I'm on a lot of money, it brings a lot of pressure. Brings a lot of pressure. Um, managers start treating you differently, or start looking at you differently. Is it because he's on the, this much amount of money? Why he's not performing, and he's he's now lost it, or he's not hungry anymore? It just brings so much thought and so much negative energy. So yeah, I definitely believe money just complicates things. Um, if you're playing for free, people won't be thinking like that. People won't be thinking like that. So yeah. That's my input on, on on how much money can make things. What what, uh, what about the dist- what about distractions? Do you feel like distractions are there. when you're not playing well? And... Yeah, so obviously, when people sign their pros at, at at clubs, I think yeah, youth youth a lot of black black folks as well. I definitely pinpoint the black folks who like to buy. The flashiest thing, by the nicest cars and and um, you know jewelry and just going out, splashing money on drinks and all of that. Um, not too sure how it is now in the academy, but I know definitely back then in my times a lot of the like my the same kind as us. I think we were definitely doing a bit too much um, and wasn't being too sensible with our money. So I think, yeah, distraction-wise, that definitely caused a lot of distraction. Yeah, yeah, I hear that. Um, I, w- I would agree and disagree. Like, if it's just, if it's just our people, I think our, I think it's to, more to do where you come from in terms of your, 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 I wouldn't say culture because culture is more of a, culture can actually be where you're from, where you're born, you know, not actually where your parents are from. 
So mm -hmm. culture in that way does tend to bring different types of pressures on you and maybe different people around you with different mindsets and things like that, right? But um, no, I, I saw, my time I saw, you know, white guys doing the same thing, so. Um, but I and, believe, I believe so. I believe a lot of, like, yes, white guys, also white guys, white folks was, or white players, they were doing similar things. But I just saw a difference. I saw, and I don't like it. I don't like pinpointing um, it, but I could just see it, and and it was annoying to see it. It was annoying, but like you said, there was white folks that were doing similar things. But I just think we were just going over the top, especially with what I saw. Anyways, with what I saw, I think we were going over the top and being boastful about it, and. Like, just giving back, if I was to give back, you know, to the community or go into one of these academies or speak to just people that are academies, you know, I would, I would, I would talk them through um, certain things on this. It's because it's all management, isn't it? It's all, it's all management. So I would, I would talk to them through these things. And it's like our culture, say the culture, you mentioned the word culture. There are certain things that we see every single day or that we listen to that influences those things and the reason why we buy those things. Do you know what I mean? So um, it's not just it's not just footballers or young footballers. It's also uh, musicians, like your music artists, um, even that like, people that don't even do sport and are just living in on the, or living around the area. They go up to one and buy these things. You know, and it's a pattern, it's a repetitive pattern that I see now that I'm a bit of an older head. I can see it from a different perspective. When I was younger, I still saw it, but it's a different perspective to how I see it now. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, I honest, honestly believe um, what I'm saying is the truth. But like I said, it's all about progression, it's all about helping each other and helping the younger younger generation in making the right decisions like you said you said um you know you would actually go in and educate the younger the younger players today and give them guidance on what path to choose but don't you think when you're young and you've got that hard head and you're just thinking there's nothing no one can tell me because like, i'm doing my thing this is the way my life is going to go. I'm on this amount of money. Like, how do you get into that person's head and change their way of thinking right. and be like, listen, I was in your position. And, you know, not to say that you made the wrong decisions or whatever, but I'm saying, like, I was in your position. I know how you're feeling. How do you get into that person's head? What do you have to say to them? Yeah, you're right. It's tough. It's, very, it's really, really tough. But, you know, I think... So I remember, obviously, we were all young. I remember people would say, yeah, I played here before and I admit I was your age and I made a mistake. But I would think, I would look at them and be like, mm, do you know what I mean? I wouldn't really take them serious. So I just, it just comes down to, like you said earlier in this, in this um, conversation as well, it comes down to their upbringing. If they really want to listen, if they really want to go far, I think the wise, listen, the wise, they will listen and they will take things on board. I think the ones that are more ignorant or arrogant and, you know, harder headed, those are the ones that tend to like fall, unless you just have some type of good luck and you make it somewhere, but it will always catch up. The bad attitudes um, and all of that will always catch up. You look at it, Ben Arthur, Mario Balotelli, that all the all the all these guys that are that are so or that have so much ability and that could have progressed so much and become a great, they all fell because of their attitude, you know. Um, so it just comes down to the individual bonus of you. I can say so much, but it's up to you if you wanna take it in. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, understood. Guys, don't forget. Make sure you subscribe. Click that button down below. Don't be shy. Subscribe. It helps our channel. And uh, yeah, you know, you get to see more videos like this one.
For more content like this, like, share and subscribe.